So, back in the early 1960s, Stanley Milgram, a social psychologist, carried out these experiments in which subjects were supposedly given progressively more painful electroshocks in a careful calibrated series. The purpose of the experiments was to determine to what extent people will obey authority even when they know they are causing pain, perhaps even severe pain, to a fellow human being. The subject of the experiments was given the role of teacher. The experimenter played the role of the authority figure, and a confederate, an actor who participates in an experiment pretending to be a subject, played the role of learner. The teacher and learner were put in separate rooms. They could communicate but they couldn't see each other. The teacher would be given a sample electric shock which the learner would supposedly be receiving during the experiment. So, the teacher is given a list of word pairs to teach the learner. The teacher reads out the list. Then, the teacher reads out the first word of each pair, along with four possible correct answers. The learner would have to press a button to indicate his response. The learner gets an answer wrong. The teacher administers an electric shock. And the voltage of the shock incrementally increases for every wrong answer the learner gives. The teacher, the subject, actually believed he was administering shocks. He wasn't, of course. After the learner, the confederate, and the teacher, the subject, were separated, the confederate would set up a tape recorder integrated with the electroshock generator which played pre-recorded sounds for each shock level like groans and screams I suppose. After a few shock level increases the confederate would start banging on the wall that separated him from the teacher. The confederate, the learner, would bang on the wall complaining of a heart condition. After doing this a few times, all responses by the learner would stop. I think it was only in one version of the experiment that the actor would mention to the subject that he had a heart condition. Anyway, at this point, many of the subjects would indicate their desire to stop the experiment and check to see if the learner was okay. Some subjects apparently paused at 135 volts, questioning the experiment's purpose. Most subjects, 
continued when assured they would not be held responsible for what they were doing. The experimentor would give the teacher props. If the teacher indicated that he wanted to stop the experiment, the experimenter would say, in this order, Please continue. The experiment requires that you continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue. You have no other choice. You must go on. If after all four prods, the subject still wished to stop, the experiment would be halted. The experiment would also be stopped if the subject dished out a 450 volt shock three times in succession. Now, before the experiments took place, Milgram polled a small number of Yale psychology majors to predict the behaviour of 100 hypothetical teachers. All of the students thought that only a small fraction, 0 to 3, out of 100 hypothetical teachers with an average of 1.2% would inflict the maximum voltage. Milgram also polled his colleagues and they too thought very few teachers subjects would go beyond a very strong shock. Also, Milgram polled 40 psychiatrists from a medical school. They thought that by the 10th shock, with the victim demanding to be freed, most subjects would refuse to go on with the experiment. They also thought only a little over one-tenth of 1% 1 of the subjects would administer the highest shock. In the first set of experiments, 65%, 26 out of 40 subjects administered the experiments final massive 450 volt shock. At some point every participant paused and questioned the experiment, some saying they would refund the money they were paid for participating. Now, other psychologists throughout the world have performed variations of this experiment and have come up with similar results. Dr. Thomas Blass performed a meta-analysis on the results of repeated performances of the experiment. He found the percentage of subjects prepared to inflict fatal voltages remains remarkably constant regardless of time or place. 61 to 66%. Milgram came in for a lot of criticism about the ethics of the experiments. Because of the emotional stress the subjects would undergo. 
Milgram argued that the ethical criticism provoked by his experiments was because his findings were disturbing and revealed unwelcome truths about human nature. Milgram was actually concerned about how believable the experimental setup was to subjects involved. In some unpublished analysis, he indicated that many subjects suspected that the experiment was a hoax. Does this cast doubt on the veracity of the results? Well, like I said before, other psychologists have done variations of this experiment and they're all coming up with similar results. So, you know. There's plenty of information online about these experiments and the results, as well as analysis. This is a fascinating subject to look into if you have the time and inclination. In case you're interested, Stanley Milgram wrote a book in 1974 called Obedience to Authority, An Experimental View. The book is Milgram's explanation of his methods. Many still consider Milgram's experiments on obedience to authority as, a, as among the most important psychological studies of the 20th century. Well, anyway folks, I will catch you later. Take care of yourselves.